Hi, and welcome to Celebration Bar Review. We are uh, in the midst of a video series uh, that I've entitled Shifts, and it's built on the work of Peter Arnell, uh, who uh, is a terrific author, a great branding uh, genius and guru. Um, and he's talking in this book a great deal about the kinds of shifts that companies and individuals need to make to be successful in their work and in their life. And I think it's got a tremendous application for the bar exam. And so I've been using some of his ideas to help uh, propel some thinking about the kinds of shifts that need to be made for you to be successful uh, as you get ready for your test. Today I want to talk about a big one. He calls it overcoming fear. And uh, I, I think that that's probably one of the huge shifts that any bar taker has to get through. There's a fear of the exam. Certainly for those who failed the exam previously, there's a fear of failure. Uh, there can be all kinds of fears wrapped up in this. The fear of authority, the fear of judgment, the fear of writing, the fear of standardized test taking, whatever it might be. What Arnell talks about in talking about fear is to say that people, to begin with, he says, people see us in lots of different ways. Um, but each of us, he says, is scared much of the time. I think he's right. And he says, when we're scared, when we're afraid, we refuse to do anything that would expose ourselves um, or uh, show our weaknesses. We don't want to be vulnerable. So we hide out, we tuck ourselves in our shells, we keep our different personalities or skills under wraps. I see that with bar takers a lot, particularly those who've taken and not been successful. And this is the time of year when I tend to hear from people who may have taken an exam in a jurisdiction multiple times in years past, sometimes 10, 15, 20 years ago, and they've literally become so traumatized by the experience that they've hidden it away, and now they're coming out from under wraps, and, and they deserve kudos. And if you're one of those people that's in that situation, feel good about that. That's a big thing that you've done. But what happens is that for many of us, and Arnell says, the unarticulated or the unimagined is easier to live with. And I think that that is absolutely the case. For most people, it's that unarticulated fear or unimagined fear of what would happen with the bar that we become sort of complacent or able to live with until we realize we have to go and pass the exam and get through it. The problem is, once you've made that decision, you need to shift your attitude because silence is no longer as a, a virtuous sort of thing. Indeed, I think what happens is that you now need to be intoxicated with the process. You need to be excited and enthusiastic. When you give yourself the right to unlock that kind of emotional truth, as Arnell calls it, what happens is that you get what he describes as the pet the tiger experience. Now, let me explain. He says that uh, if you go to the zoo and you see the tiger in the cage, as an adult, you know that it's a dangerous, scary animal, but it's also beautiful. Uh, but if you look at a small child, the small child will go right up to the cage and, in fact, unless mom or dad or somebody else doesn't grab their hand, they're likely to try and reach their hand right through the cage to pet the tiger. Why? Well, it's because kids are fearless. I mean, they don't know that the tiger uh, is able to devour them in a single bite, uh, and so they don't understand what's going to happen in the same way that that same child will run full blast down the, the, the zoo path and trip and fall and bounce and roll up and get over and do it again. But what happens is that when we're childlike, we see that, that tiger, and the childlike part of us wants to reach out and grab it. But the adult in us says, oh no, that's going to be dangerous, that's scary. Now here's the connection to the bar exam. As an adult, we look at the bar exam and we say, oh, that brings back bad memories, or it brings back bad experiences, or something bad happened to me, or I'm not good at test taking, or I'm being judged by someone, or whatever it might be. And it scares the living you-know-what out of most of us. And yet, inside of us, there's a child that's not afraid of that who says, you know what, um, I'm not going to put limits there. I can do anything. I can be anything. I can pass a test. That's not a, a big deal. The child in us simply wants to pet the tiger. It wants to reach out, strike, you know, uh, stroke that nice fur. The child in us wants to be successful in a test like the bar exam. But what happens is that for a lot of people, fear will limit their behavior. It will wear them down. When I talk to people who are considering going back and taking the bar exam at this point, I get a real cautiousness. In fact, I almost get a sense of distrust or mistrust. Anything connected with the bar exam is distrustful. Um, and one of the biggest challenges I have in the first day or two or three is to overcome that sense of distrust, that adult that says, oh, you must be trying to fake me out somehow. 
You know, it, it, the reason I try to get past that is if I can get to the child, if I can get to the, the inner part, then I've got a chance at what I would call a collaboration. And Arnell talks about collaboration. He says that's the power of we, and life is a collaboration. And a big high-stakes test is absolutely a collaboration. It's the sort of thing that requires mentoring and assistance and training and coaching and teaching. But you can't do that if someone's pushing you off, if they're holding you at arm's length distance. So one of the shifts that you'll have to go through in order to take and be successful on this exam is to shift that sense of fear and set it aside. Now, that doesn't mean you pretend that there's nothing to be afraid of. You can clearly acknowledge that the tiger is scary, but you can also admire its beauty. In the same way, you can acknowledge that the bar exam is difficult and challenging. You may even need to acknowledge that you've not been successful in the past. But that doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. And it doesn't mean that you need to take that approach and to be afraid of it. Instead, I think what it means is that you shift the approach to the exam. If you studied in a big box bar review for six weeks, uh, you know, watching a, a professor read a lecture from uh, 20 years ago, and you got no response and no feedback on your work and no one to help you except your neurotic uh, seatmates, um, gee, are you surprised you didn't pass? Statistically, the odds say you wouldn't. So you need to do something differently. If you're afraid of the idea of standardized test taking, maybe you need to look at how you study for the exam. You tried to cram and memorize instead of learning over a longer period of time, uh, building on what you, you learn. There are a lot of shifts that we use in this course. We shift your emotions, we shift your study approach, we shift your reading style even uh, with things like our STAR program that utilize photo reading and, and meditation. We try to do as much as we can to shift the paradigm to shift the frame so that you've got the ability to look at the test more objectively, more clearly, more rationally, and then to be successful at it. There's a lot more I could say about fear. In the course, we do a test anxiety workshop, and it's probably a big part of uh, that uh, uh, part of the course and then where I get a, a great response. I had someone that went through that course and uh, had that feeling of, of fear and uh, anxiety. They wrote to me just the other day, having completed the exam, and they said, you know, I loved everything about this course. Um, I love the fact that, uh, you know, you're there and you're, you're giving that kind of guidance and support. You know, all we're really trying to do is to create a collaboration with our students to help get them to their goals. You know, if you can trust that that's going to happen, and if you can trust that we know how to do it, then I think you're well on the way towards a major shift in your thinking and a shift that will help you pass the bar. As you think about this, if you've got questions or you'd like to talk with me, I invite you to give me a call. Uh, the icon's on our uh, web pages. Uh, or send me an email, jackson at celebrationbarreview.com. As always, I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll be back again shortly uh, with another uh, shift that I'd like you to consider as you prepare for your bar exam. Thanks for watching.